if if you evidence your intent to to not be with that thing, and you evidence it clearly uh, by the evidence, by your works and actions, we can save you. I can pull you right out. But if you're evidencing that you're patronizing that thing, and you're accepting what it's doing to you, and you're evidencing that you're going to bite me if I try to do that, no way. I, you know, I'm not going to help anybody who is not helping themselves. I, I'm not allowed to because that, that liability becomes mine. And I'm not taking out the liability for somebody who's patronizing the Lord God. I can't. I don't speak that word. That, that would go against the public law. Right. Well, he, I mean, he's evidencing a lot of things that they're doing to him while he's in there. Uh, you know, I, I discussed why it is that they can get away with that um, because he is still – you know, claiming to be a man and uh, these these things. self appointed government or something, foreign state or whatever, private. He said that he's he's evidenced himself as a private state or foreign state or whatever under the definitions of uh, 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603. And so can't do anything for him. He's evidenced that he's a franchise. Yeah, I would just say, I'll you know, put it out there to his followers when he gets out, have him contest if he have him contact us if he so desires. I did try to contact him in the past on numerous occasions and exchanged a few Skype chats, chats but uh, other than that, he didn't really um, want to make the time for my material. So Right, and, and we saw that with the actions of Rob Class. I tried to reach out to him for so long because when I first met him, I thought he was a great guy. And then as he goes along, he keeps doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And then he's promoting the same thing over and over again. And then it solidified in October when he pled guilty and continued on the same path. He pled guilty and is still telling his followers that, you know, they should do this or this. He pled guilty. And he's also got an attorney there that made an appearance. You know, there's 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 a distinction between somebody adhering to the public law and somebody not adhering to the public law. And that's a prime example is rock class. Right. And if you're claiming UCC or something like that for your status, uh, you're evidencing yourself to be with that state. Right. Which is foreign to the public. Uh, I think people are starting to ease off the UCC stuff because those actions in court have gone pretty much nowhere. Um, you know, I mean, that was created under the Negotiable Instruments Act. Right. Way back when it was the um, first it was called the Law Merchant. You can read this in answer to the uh, bills and notes. Um, first, it was the law merchant, and the law merchant went into the Negotiable Instrument Acts, and then when the Negotiable Instrument Acts were taken over, it was taken over by the Uniform Commercial Code itself, and that, that is the law merchant. That's the one selling you rights and benefits if you accept those titles. Are you a female today? Okay, you get this, 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 and this. Are you a male today? Yes, you get this, 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 and this. Are you white today? Yes, you get this, 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 and this. Are you black? This, 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 and this. Purple, red, yellow, this, this, this. And those are the rights and benefits that come with those concepts. But you're not the heir. You're purchasing a concept, and then you're purchasing more concepts, more concepts, more concepts. You know, that is the definition of Blackacre. It's a fictional creation. It's a fictional creation. That's how you are hypothecated. You're claiming to be a fiction. A franchise of the United States Incorporated. Fiction. And you're you're adhering to a fictional government. Here you have the House of Delegates, which is the lower chambers of the House of Representatives, with full-on administrative control over the Bar Association. So where's the bar? And and there there's some useful idiots out there that just said England. <laughs> You know, come on. The bar is under Congress, 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 Congress. One of the first clergy members for Congress that were promoting the bar was Lincoln, President Lincoln, clergy for Congress, the voice of Congress, clergy. Now, I'll, I'll stop right there. He was a credit reporter for Dun & Bradstreet, by the way, uh, just as much as uh, Taft and two other presidents. But the thing is, is that you have to realize that clergy means the voice of something. 
the voice of whatever it's patronizing. Representative means it represents the voice of something or represents the voice of something. And so in your own house, your house members are your clergy if they're speaking your word. They're not your representative. They don't represent your word. We don't represent your word. That's the bottom line. Don't be represented. Stop choosing to be seen in a different way. We were talking about respect on, on Thursday. Respect. Seen again in a different, a different way. Represented. Presented again in a different way. Let me tell you what you are. It's kind of like, you know, these people that claim that, well, the Constitution replaced the Articles of Confederation. Yeah, where did it put them? <laughs> yeah. 